Why did the showrunners decide to cut down on visual effects on The Witcher? What monster was the toughest to create, keeping these restrictions in mind? And finally, how much CGI was used in The Witcher series? Hi, my name is Tim, and you are watching Awesome Movies. The Witcher showrunner Lauren Schmidt Hisrick has always claimed that the series is unique, with regards to the characters, but also because of the approach she chose in order to bring the show to life, namely the limited use of CGI. So how exactly were the visual effects used in The Witcher? Let's start with Geralt's showdown with the Striga. The scene is a superbly well-crafted hybrid of CGI and practical effects, and we owe its authenticity to the decision of the show's creators not to abuse the use of special effects. According to Julian Perry, The Witcher's visual effects supervisor, the series was planned as being imaginative in a grounded horror sense. It means that the monsters should have felt real, so the use of prosthetics should always prevail over computers. The entire original fight scene took almost six minutes, and you can see the full version of it on Vladimir Furtick's Instagram page, who choreographed almost every fight in Season 1. Even without CGI, the incredible choreography and camera work created a spectacular result, which made most fans consider it the best fight of The Witcher so far. And if you were watching this scene closely, you have noted that there was a lot of rope work there, both for the stuntman and the cameraman. The Steadicam operator James Freighter actually had to go crashing through the floor with Henry Cavill and the Striga stunt actor. Upon seeing this, I think cameramen should also have stunt doubles of their own. Talk about commitment! Even more rope work was included, and the acting scenes involved magic and various blasts, like the telekinetic art sign performed by Geralt. Or like that memorable scene during the Battle of Sodden, where Yennefer and Sabrina were blown away from the tower by a powerful explosion. And though the dangerous parts were performed by professional doubles, Anya Chalotra and Therica Wilson-Reed still were sent flying for a bit, as proved by this tweet from The Witcher director Mark Jobst. But no matter how perfect the choreography of an action sequence is, some subtle efficient VFX work makes the scene simply brilliant, stated the special effects lead Julian Perry. By the way, despite the showrunner's decision to avoid the extensive use of CGI, Henry Cavill pushed for his character to use more of The Witcher signs on the show because the audience must know how he can do these things. It mattered to me, Cavill said, because it's all part of being a Witcher. So, where else was CGI used? In an interview with Sci-Fi Now magazine, Lauren schmidt Hisrich admitted, obviously there's CGI in the show, but we really did use as many authentic environments as we could. The location scouts of the series found absolutely beautiful sceneries in ancient castles, so most of the places we see on The Witcher are real. However, special effects give that finishing touch needed for an adventure saga, whether it's a splash of blood or an arrow flying in slow motion, or a school for sorceresses. Oh yes, the Academy of Aratuza was built with the help of some digital magic over a rocky islet near one of the Canary Islands. Julian Perry explained that the building design grew as an extension of that exotic location setting. Other scenes where special effects had to be used were the battle scenes, because the huge armies couldn't physically fit on set. So some of the armies were added via CGI. As Julian Perry told SFX Magazine, we've got the Nilfgaard armies, which can't exist because there are 10,000 plus of them. Same with the Temerians and the Sentrans. But let's get back to the monsters, because they're an important part of the world of The Witcher. In an interview with Premiere Magazine, the production designer Andrew Laws explained that he and the showrunner intended to steer away from CGI because they didn't want to see the actor play in front of a green screen, talking to a green ball. They wanted something real. But what if something real is just impossible? I'm talking about the Kiki more, of course. Designing and adding visual effects to the series took about 18 months, but bringing this creature to life on screen appeared to be the most challenging task of all. VFX supervisor Julian Perry admitted the fact that although monsters have their own complexities, the Kiki more still wins. It was pretty difficult to fully realize a convincing eight-legged aquatic insectoid. I've seen really weird, strange, sick things, and I think, how can I get that into this creature? Yet an even more complex task was to design and shoot the fighting sequence with the Kikimura in the swamp. Unfortunately, we don't have the details of how this sequence was created, but we at Awesome Movies will certainly keep an eye out on that. And we'll be sure to try and find out which monsters Geralt might have to deal with in the next season of the series. So what do you think about the use of CGI in The Witcher? Did you find it convincing enough? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.